like giants from the place where we would stand Head against your shoulder, reach for your left hand We tried to talk about things that we just didn't understand this awesome celebration of online videos in general. It's just this big gathering of all these YouTube content creators and fans of those content creators. Fans of video blogging and YouTube channels. Uh, they have a bunch of different things for just fans and then they have industry meetings to learn how to make better video. <laughs> John and Hank Green are two of the most well-known on YouTube. I think that Hank and John started VidCon because they saw how uh, big of a community formed around their videos, and through that they probably saw you know other people's online videos and channels. And I think to them logically they're like, well, clearly these people have to know each other. Like, you can't just all be into the same things and in your own little pockets. You got to combine it into one world. You know, that is literally the quintessential what's beautiful about YouTube uh, in community building, in, in a sense. And uh, I think it's kind of unique that around video you can create people who are really passionate and, and have like minds, and then they can join forces to do awesome things. Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. My wife is a Yeti, my dog is a pirate, and I am a semi-professional video blogger. Hank, do you ever wonder how this all, like, happened. Uh, Brotherhood 2.0 was how Vlogbrothers started. Brotherhood 2.0 was a project started by two brothers, John and Hank Green. It was John and Hank communicating with each other through vlogs for a whole year and that's how they talked to each other. They made a rule that for a year they couldn't communicate through text so they started sending each other video blogs on their YouTube channel. So a blog is anything that, you know, is written down, especially your thoughts and your opinions. A vlog is that in video form. Say Monday, John would make a video to Hank, and then Tuesday, Hank would make a reply video. It just started as a way for them to just talk to each other uh, over a long distance because they live really far away from each other. And then everyone started watching it. I had only just come across YouTube at that point in time. And to see a guy sit there and eat toilet paper and talk about opinions and politics. Good morning, John. It's Wednesday. No, yes, yes, Wednesday. Good morning, Hank. It's Thursday, January 24th. Complicated. It was weird and hilarious at the same time as being completely and utterly out of left field. I think at that point in YouTube, I didn't even know that there was a view button that you could actually look and see how many people viewed. I was just going on to watch two dudes talk to each other. For a while, like for the first two or three years, I was sort of in awe of what they were doing. I mean, the first six months, you know, it was just, isn't this great? I get to see my kids every day, you know, because they don't live at home 
and I get to see them talking to each other, so that was nice. Um, and then when it started becoming very popular because of the Harry Potter song, and they hit their million views, and then the community started kind of becoming a community, um, I was very impressed with that. It's kind of just got really, really, really large, and they didn't really realize at that point that how big it was, or how big they had got. It was meant to be just like a year thing, a year long thing, and then they just kept going. Uh, that was when they first got into YouTube, and then the fan fans of that, that it became Nerdfighters, and that's where it all started. John Green is an author of young adult fiction, and he is, in my opinion, one of the best authors of young adult fiction. John always, always wrote. Uh, we've got some of the funny stories. There's a video about one of them. Just Isn't Fair by John Green. Wimp, I'm Alvin Loris. Of course you're Alvin Loris. It's adorable. I'm pretty smart, but I'm a total nerd. Yeah, John always wanted to tell stories, you know. And uh, high school is where I, we really first started seeing these sort of flashes of brilliance, and you just go, oh God, you know, it was different. John's books are phenomenal, oh my goodness. I used to pick one up in high school, but I would never read it, and then I read Looking for Alaska, and I've read every single of one of his novels. I love how they're written, because they're not, they're not written too simply, but they're not pretentious either. They're, they're easy to read. Like some authors kind of kind of patronize readers and play down certain aspects of teenage life, but like he doesn't hold back and he like he brings in like really sad parts, but also is like in the next page can have really really funny bits, and it just like shows the kind of whirlwind of emotions that teenage life is. <laughs> y al lado de mi terraza estaban mis vecinos festejando y yo estaba leyendo Looking for Alaska y como que me reía y después lloraba y después me reía y como que me miraban raro y yo le estaba pasando re bien. Thanks to the younger of the Vlog Brothers. He used to be a biochemist and now he is uh, an internet entrepreneur and musician. Mm -hmm. He's been a few businesses with the FTBA Records, currently runs Eco Geek, uh, an environmental blog, mm -hmm. along with the Vlog Brothers. Pink makes lots of music. Hank's music is... It's, it's just fun. It's just something that you can sing along to and dance along to and, and they're informative as well. You learn things. You learn about corks and anglerfish. And it's, just, it's just an amazing combination of fun and knowledge. A cork is a fundamental constituent of matter observed in 1968 through deep elastic scatter. And we found that protons aren't as simple as we thought. We thought they were solid particles, but they are not protons. In fact, are made up of three separate pieces. It just gets more confusing as our knowledge increases. But that is what a cork is. It's a piece of a proton. And they also make up other things, including the neutron. Oh, up, down, strange, jar, top, bottom. If you don't know what a quark is, it don't matter. You still got them. And with leptons and bosons and nothing. The video that absolutely launched uh, Hank and John's videos was this video about um, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. I'm getting kind of tired of this. Pre-publication media blitz. You got all of muggle kind under your spell. Don't you know the whole world's already gone and reserved a copy at Amazon? How many more books could you sell? Now give me my book or go to hell. Cause I need Harry Potter like a Grindy Low needs water and acid. Between the two of them though, I think like you do get a really good package of like learning a lot about science from Hank and then learning how to think about things from John. Like they do complement each other a lot. I think that John and Hank are very accessible and hilarious and so strange in the very best of ways. Well they're both really funny and kind of immature in the same sense because John, all of John's live streams where he's covered in Sharpie and he eats peanut butter off his face. They don't act like adults. They don't act all, you know, stuffy and pompous and look down on the rest of us. You know, they really relate to us. They remember what it was like to be a kid our age and they don't stop acting like it. I mean, if you watch them, they're hilarious because they're not afraid to be who they are. They just kind of like, they have a certain appeal and they're kind of like nerdy, kind of able to connect, understand what, how like normal people our age feel. John and Hank have such a following, it's because like it's universally relatable being in, like loving things. It doesn't matter if you're 10 or 80, like everyone loves something and it's it's something everyone can relate to. There, there are two things that we have always wanted, to be grown up and to still be able to be ourselves. <laughs>
I think a lot of the best adults end up being the kind of people they wanted to be when they were kids. And I think that is true of John and Hank, that they try to be as much fun and as happy and as idealistic as they were when they were closer to our age. And that we enjoy seeing that idealism still intact, that we can still be like that when we are their age. Uh, jiggle it out a little bit. And then it all just came right back. You like went, woo ah. Do it again. Uh. Okay, that looks better, that looks better. For me, it was one of those things where there was just a day where all of a sudden I discovered everything. And it was one of those moments where you realize, like, how have I been without this all my life? The best way that I can describe Nerdfighter uh, would probably be we are a we are the fan base of two guys who became incredibly famous on the internet and we've all managed to find sort of a common interest that we all have. A bunch of people on the internet who watch John and Hank's videos and then they uh, get together outside in the actual world. Nerd fighters aren't only online. I mean, they, it did start online, but uh, it has moved and transcended the internet. We play video games, we read books, we talk to each other, we just do general nerdy stuff. I know people sort of who are nerd fighters, but they're not necessarily nerds. Like, I just think nerd fighters are a group of people that are just lovely people to be around with and that should sort of share a, a common interest. I kind of just uh, surround myself with people who like the same things I do, so a lot of them end up being nerd fighters. <laughs> they don't even really need to know they're a nerd fighter. I feel like there's a lot of people who they don't know they're nerd fighters. They are, but they don't know it yet. <laughs> I know it's the kind of thing that you know you would tell your friends about, like you know, watching John and Hank's videos, and you tell your friends about them, and and they would go on, and then you'd meet people on the internet, tell them, then they tell their friends, and it just spreads so quickly. Just a really nice group of people who um, are very passionate about things. It kind of the one the one big thing, I guess, is just you have to be interested in. Things. It's a passion kind of thing. <laughs> Nerd fighters tend to have this kind of fire for life and humanity and the people around them. The great thing about Nerd fighters is that, yes, you can be into a ton of different things and you're going to find people who are into those too, but that's not really the point. The entire point of a Nerd fighter is that you're crazy, passionate, and super into something. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as there is something that, you know, just burns you deep down to your core and just makes you want to scream and do a happy dance like that that's all that a nerd fighter is down at the core <laughs> typical nerd fighter normally likes harry potter or maybe game of thrones we have our fandoms it is something that people really obsess about something that uh, people are big fans of fandom i guess doctor who harry potter sherlock um doctor who is a major part right now Sherlock Holmes. And then there's like literature fandoms and Harry Potter, of course. Harry Potter is like the biggest. Specific music fandoms and we just like fandoms, <laughs> really. The idea of nerdfighterian fandoms kind of go perfectly together because you have these nerd fighters who are generally a little bit more enthusiastic. <laughs> we'll go with that over here and then the things that they really enjoy and really love, which their enthusiasm goes into those. But the thing is, they collect groups of friends that all go into those fandoms together so they can all have a big nerd out moment with each other to talk about the things that they love in life. And even if you don't like the same things as other people, you accept their obsession. I don't necessarily think there's a stereotypical nerd fighter. I don't think you could, you know, have a list of descriptive words and be like, oh yes, that's a nerd fighter. But I think the one thing that most or all nerd fighters have in common is that they're accepting of others. Um, I think that's really what John and Hank enforce in a lot of their videos and they're pretty cool with just about everybody. Our goal is to decrease world suck and so we want to spread awesome. Don't forget to be awesome, you know. We want to help communities, we want to uh, reach out to the world basically and help other people. Uh, world Suck is all the bad things happening in the world, like poverty and uh, world hunger and 
the economy basically. <laughs> world suck is just bad stuff happening in the world. You know, there's poverty, bullying, uh, just not nice people. Just I mean, you can just smile at someone who looks like they're having a bad day and hopefully brighten it. Or you could hold the door open for people. You know, nerd buyers can just decrease world stuff by being supportive to other people who are having a hard time. John and Hank are always promoting charities like Kiva.org and they're getting Nerdvertary involved in microfinance and giving to people that are less fortunate than us and just coming together and creating projects like the Project for Awesome where we all get to choose our own charities to try to promote. Our community takes over YouTube. We Everybody makes a video supporting a specific organization and they try to get people to watch their videos, support their, their organization, and donate. We all go around favoriting it and commenting on it so that it gets really popular and gets on the featured page of YouTube. That way people who aren't necessarily nerd fighters can still become aware of all the cool causes that they could support and they can become aware of our community. There was a moment yesterday in the middle of watching hundreds of videos and talking about them with thousands of nerd fighters where I thought that other than my wedding day, this was the happiest I'd been since I was like seven. I mean, the last thing that made me this happy was probably Fraggle Rock. It's just so amazing to see all these people come together to support each other and all these worthy organizations. The HPA stands for the Harry Potter Alliance, which is a nonprofit organization that raises awareness about really important social issues and raises money to donate to charities. Remember when Nerdfighteria and the Harry Potter Alliance raised $123,000 to help Haiti heal and we had the SSDFTVA load up and go over to Haiti? Right, that Harry Potter Alliance. There's the, the Star Won't Go Out Foundation, which a lot of us are a part of and we donate to. They met um, this uh, Nerdfighter called Esther Earl and she was, she was quite sick. And um, like when they went to see her and they just, I think they just sort of completely fell in love with this person. Good morning, Hank. It's Friday. Esther Earl, the nerdfighter who inspired a lot of Nerdfighter's recent World Suck Decreasing projects, died earlier this week. She was 16. Esther was a great friend to many people in Nerdfighteria and a great friend to me personally. And for a long time, she has been a huge part of the life of the Nerdfighter community. And our community, in turn, was a huge part of her life. I don't know. She inspired so many people. And it's really awesome to see how she's done that and since then has inspired more people. Esther means star and her friends had a bracelet printed up that reads, this star won't go out and it won't. We won't let it. And it's to help families with kids with cancer just to cope and have a little extra money. And then Kiva.org is, it wasn't actually set up by John and Hank, but John and Hank made it incredibly popular. Kiva.org is basically a, uh, a way to give money to people in third world countries that are trying to make businesses and improve other people's lives. And what you do is you give your money and they take your money graciously and they make stuff out of it. Whether it's a business, whether it's products, whether it's clean water, whatever it is, they take it, they make something of it and they give it back. Now, you don't always get it back, but it's a fairly high percentage that you get back. And then you can just put that into more businesses. And so basically it's a way for you to lend money, get it back, and then lend it again. We've done certain stuff like uh, get fresh, uh, clean water and everything to certain communities. Thanks to Nerdfighteria and Water.org, those people have more than just a well. They have a community owned asset that people pay a fair price to use and that money goes into maintaining that asset. So that 20, 30, 50 years from now, those people still have a source of clean water. They've built something that the community's invested in, has control over and cooperatively maintains. And now because of this resource, they have more time to grow their economy, to educate themselves and their children because they can spend less time going to get water and less time being sick. We're not oblivious to the way that society and media and culture is today we know that it freaking sucks right now and we know that it needs to get better and collectively we're <laughs> making the world better trying to being a nerd fighter or like discovering it like made me realize that even if you're if even if you know about like all these problems in the world you can actually do something I mean, I have yet to meet a nerd fighter who doesn't believe that humanity can be great and do awesome things. Nobody can save the world, but if anybody is going to come anywhere close to it, it's the nerd fighters.
There's so many, so many inside jokes in Nerdfighter, uh, Nerdfighteria that like you lose track of them. <laughs> I think a few would be another statement. My favorite is definitely DFTBA, don't forget to be awesome, just because I think that those are words that everyone should live by. My favorite thing about Nerdfighteria is probably the, the, the slogan, if you will, don't forget to be awesome because it's something that I just try to apply to my everyday life and my everyday life is awesome. To me it means um, just don't forget that you can be awesome, uh, don't forget that um, you know to be respectful, but to be friendly, you know just to be a nice person, be an awesome person. Like there have been times on the street where I've just been saying D DFTBA to my friend and then someone walking by will just shout DFTBA back. We should never forget to be awesome. DFTBA! And this, ah, is a, the Nerdfighter gang sign. So if you see somebody doing this, you know that not to shoot them. I really love the joke, In Your Pants. Yes. Uh, in Your Pants uh, came out from uh, Maureen Johnson. Maureen Johnson is a uh, another uh, young uh, adult author. And um, she is really good friends, really close to John and Hank Green. Uh, Maureen Johnson basically discovered that if you put in your pants at the end of any book title, it becomes awesome. Dance of the Dissident Daughter in Your Pants. Present moment, wonderful moment in your pants. Stumbling on happiness in your pants. Getting the girl in your pants. The mystery of the golden spheres in your pants. Every man in your pants. And Albert Camus' classic, The Stranger in Your Pants. French the Llama. French the Llama. I'm big on French the Llama. It's a general exclamation of excitement. French the Llama. French the Llama is something that John is trying to make into a thing in which people say, French the Llama, that whale is big. But it's not going to work. Oh, it's going to happen. I'm going to make French the Llama happen. And it doesn't actually mean anything, but you hear people say it all the time in so many different contexts. I think it's awesome. Puppy-sized elephants. Uh, puppy-sized elephants. Puppy-sized elephants is basically asking natural selection for puppy-sized elephants because they would have the evolutionary advantage of being adorable. This is John Green with a mustache uh, and pizza. It's Pete called Pizza John t-shirt. Uh, probably one of the most iconic t-shirts for nerd fighters. Well, John likes pizza and one time in a video for like five seconds he had a mustache so I figured I would combine the two. I really, I really don't know or remember what specifically led me to combine these two elements into a beautiful image, but the result is striking, I believe. It's great because, you know, loads of nerd fighters have it. It's very recognizable as a t-shirt and you will meet lots of nerd fighters around the place if you just wear it as much as possible. I think like nerf fighters are all unique and but also have this like one thing that overlaps which isn't like the community of Nerdfighteria. In general, Nerdfighteria is a place where people from around the world can come together with common interest and find friends. It's kinda hard to explain the whole concept of Nerdfighteria to people. Because whenever I a lot of people when I explain it they're like so well, you're in a cult. And I'm like, no, no, that's not it. Nerd Fighteria is the island or town where we all live together as a community to help make more world awesome. It's really just something that's a place inside all of us where we can be together, whether it be online or in the real world. Nerd Fighteria is primarily online with interactions in real life, essentially like dispersed throughout. Uh, it's online because it spreads so much like it's a it's around the world and because it's online it allows all of the people to get together and hang out and talk and chat and meet nerd fighters communicate online through multiple ways because we're teenagers and we're really good at finding out ways to do that name the social network and i will show you where nerd fighters communicate uh tumblr for sure Facebook, depending on what area you're in. There was the name, which was the official Nerdfighter site for a while, and then I think it was your pants, in your pants, the forum. But YouTube, obviously, because that's where they put all the videos. I mean, there, there are copious amount of ways to talk to each other and to just get, you know, super excited about what we're into. <laughs> I think it's indicative of 
our era, of our time, why it's online, because it would, I don't think it would work as well if there wasn't the internet, if it wasn't online. No Fighteria grew so quickly because there are so many of us out there who don't have a particular place to be in and to be themselves in, and it's nice to feel included with others. We need to be together in these things rather than like, it's really hard to kind of be the only person you know who's into a book or into a film or into a TV show and no one else gets excited about it. I knew that there was a whole culture behind, you know, like Harry Potter and Doctor Who and stuff, but I never really felt like I could join in because I didn't know how to break into that. But then when I found Nerd Fighteria, I was like, everybody has at least some similar interests with, with somebody else and everybody is so excited to find people who are also interested in the same things as them that it just makes it a lot easier to make friends. In high school, it was kind of, I felt a little distant from everybody else. I liked different things, I was kind of labeled as a nerd. <laughs> and when I found the Vlogbrothers and Nerd Fighteria was beginning at that point when I found, the, found them, I kind of was accepted into this group and I felt normal, you know, where as in high school, I didn't feel normal. We don't really judge anyone for liking something. For me, being a nerd fighter reminds me that I'm not alone in anything that I do. Like if I have a favorite fandom, if I have this obscure thing, someone else out there knows about it and could be my friend and can talk about it. Nerd Fighters has always been something that's kind of been there for me. Like, um, anytime I've been feeling sad or anytime something bad after happening, I'd go on and I'd watch one of the videos and it would just kind of make me always feel better. And m the majority of my friends are Nerd Fighters and without Nerd Fighters, I wouldn't be friends with them. In the group of Facebook, it's like, hola, tengo un problema, necesito ayuda, y tenés al toque 50 personas comentándote, bueno, así estás el otro, yo te ayudo, no sé qué. Y el simple hecho de ayudarnos entre nosotros solo porque somos Nerd Fighters. Eso, eso es feliz. It basically it encourages everybody to just embrace themselves and to embrace other people who may be different and may have different opinions and different likes and dislikes. I personally enjoy it because uh, there's a place where I can go and meet people and they take me along with them and just have a great time. I think it's very values based and I think they're the right values. I think Nerdfighters are like that because, uh, well, the founders of Nerdfighteria, John and Hank Green, are very um, adamant about supporting being open and friendly to each other and they're such good role models for everybody who's part of the community that I think that they just try to emulate that. It's just all based around Hank and John's videos. What's really cool is it goes much, much beyond that. You know, as Hank and John were saying, earlier uh, this weekend, you know, most of Nerdfighter has been built by the Nerdfighters. I mean, they're the, they're the cornerstone of it, they're the center of it, but it really is this large community of people who are just awesome. I think they're as much on the same level as we are, like, um, they're a part of us and we are part of, you know, the community. I like the community aspect of it and I like how we're all in different, different places and have different ideas, but we all have like this thing in common. All over the world I feel like I'm connected to these people who have similar interests and similar viewpoints as myself. I think that the Nerdfighter community is so global because the one thing that we do all have in common is we're all passionate. We're all super in to something. Um, I know that a lot of us are a younger generation, but not, you know, not all of us. So I mean, that does connect us, but I mean, it, it's just that passion. It's that love for whatever it is that connects all of us. I think that's why it's global because, I mean, love for anything speaks across all nations. A lot of those themes of just loving what you love and being who you are is something that appeals to human beings as opposed to just one culture or country. It basically allows people from around the world to talk about things of common interest and have a good time together and not have to worry about, you know, distance and everything else. And so, because Nerdfighteria is online, you can have friends everywhere. I think it's just such an original concept. Like, just having this whole group of people coming together with 
who aren't part of a specific fandom or anything. It's just people who enjoy being around other intellectual people. It's just, you get a bunch of like-minded people who are all really nice to each other. And there's really great people. And they just, it works. The thing about having an online, something that's based online is that everyone lives so far away and they always feel really alone for being the only person in wherever they live who likes, you know, the Vlogbrothers. And it's really nice when you find out that one other person wants to meet people in that same area who also likes those same things. I wanted to meet more people in my area. I just wanted to meet people in real life, IRL. I've had a really positive experience meeting other nerd fighters. Um, I've been to a few nerd fighter gatherings. They're always uh, very fun. A normal gathering experience is lots of hanging out. We then generally don't have any real plan behind them. It's meet up in a place and meet nerd fighters. I just suppose, like, I mean, you talk to people online who are nerd fighters and like, wow, you're really cool. And then you meet them in real life and it's just, wow, you actually exist. I expected that maybe like 10 people at the most would show up. Over 50 people replied to the Facebook event, said that they were going. So I kind of freaked out. It was a shock to see that many people show up to me. Something nerd fire related. They're all like really friendly. I went to gathering a few months ago, didn't know anyone. Like instantly felt like I knew the people there and like they make you feel accepted even though they all half of them already knew each other. It's just like they make you feel welcome because they know exactly what kind of things you like and who you are basically. It was nice to realise that the fan base is alive over here in this small rock in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. I like the gatherings because even if people show up who I don't know, it's always just such an open and accepting atmosphere that I can make friends. The first gathering we had, um, there were maybe two people there who knew each other and some of the people that I met there are some of my best friends. I was, I'm really socially awkward, so I was kind of, I saw them in the group and I knew it was them. I just knew, it was just like an instant knowing that that was the Nerd Fighters in, in a group. But I kind of stood to the side a bit to kind of prepare myself, because I was just like, I'm going to be so awkward. But I went over, and the minute I went over, and like, I was like, are you guys the Nerd Fighters? Everyone just came over to me and was talking to me and was so nice and lovely. And like within five minutes, it was like I'd known them all, like my whole life. And I, I never really experienced anything like that before. So it was kind of a, an amazing thing to happen. I finally met people who were like me and I've always, you know, kind of been put down for being nerdy or being geeky or whatever you want to call it. But I found this giant community in Ireland, halfway around the world, that was accepting, that was amazing, that was fun. And some of my closest friends now are nerd fighters. Actually, almost all of my closest friends now are nerd fighters. When you can meet up with people who uh, live near you and go to schools near you, and um, you know you can have a personal connection and talk about things you have in common, and it brings you closer to nerd fighteria as a as a whole through this small group. You start going to gatherings that we have, and you meet these people that you've been hanging out with on the internet, and you're like. These people are awesome! Look, I like hanging out with these people! It was, it was just brilliant. The Nerd Fighter Gathering is just one of the best things that I love doing. Hank and John being such genuine, awesome people make them such good role models because they're not afraid to share their thoughts and they're not afraid to share their beliefs, but they do it in a way that's respectful. I mean, all of these online videos, like they're real people. We know that Hollywood hasn't come in and like touched them up or applied crazy special effects. Like these are people like just chilling at home who decide that they want, they have something to say and they want the world to hear it. And I think that's what our generation really likes is that it's real. They, A, they created this, this great community and B, they made it, I mean, there are a lot of different factors in this, but they kind of made it cool to be a nerd or they helped the cultural movement of 
being nerdy. Faltaría definitivamente el cambio en mi vida. Eh, organizar las galerías y venir es algo que tengo que hacer siempre en línea toda porque sé que me puedo juntar con mis amigos que conozco que no son más fighters, pero sé que no lo voy a pasar igual porque no me entienden de la misma manera. Done loads of things in nerd fighters that I never would have got the chance to do if I hadn't like I've had lightsaber battles with friends and I've gone to uh, conventions and met other nerd fighters and we've all done the salute and we've all talked and we've all at all the gatherings as well and up until this point I've never been comfortable with myself. I've never been comfortable with my nerdiness or with liking the things that I like because I've only known a handful of people my entire life that like the same things. So Nerfighter, Nerfighteria has given me that ability. It's given me the ability to be comfortable with myself. And by doing that, it's also given me a whole group of friends that I'm so happy to have in my life. Learning to love me was a process that they were actively involved in without knowing they were actively involved in it. They show us through their example that it's okay to be yourself. You can like whatever you like. You're allowed to do that and you're allowed to be passionate about the things that you love and in fact that makes those things even better and when you're passionate about things you love you can find other people that are just as passionate as you and I think that that is really the heart of Nerdfighteria. It's just people loving things and getting together and loving those things together. I think uh, no fighters will stay around for a long time. I don't think it's gonna fizzle out because people who are now uh, nerd fighters, they will. I think they will stay like that for the rest of their life, or they will remember it, and they will probably tell their, you know, their children. I think even when John and Hank are long past their days of video making, there there'll still be some people out there who will make the videos. It will eventually become like this with archives and videos, sort of like a bible for nerd fighters. I think it's just going to keep getting bigger. I mean, YouTube is getting bigger, Nerdfighter is getting bigger, more and more people are connecting, making friends. And the friendships formed wouldn't just dissolve because of a lack of John Bank. However, I think they will continue to be so very important to it because we still all care a lot about the things they say. So um, I think you could survive without them, but I think it will be better with them. Without Hank and John, it probably would have never come into being, but I think even if they hadn't started, there would be some kind of community along the lines of Nerd Fighteria that would have sprang up. And I think they were more so just the catalyst to make it happen. I think it's only going to get better. That's the only thing I can say about it. Desperation, the silent. Despair. 
consolation. I'd rather see your world go on turning and watch you smile at a girl more deserving than hear you say that you think we're better off this way. My heart says, ow, 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 ow. pirate and I am a semi-professional video blogger. Hank, do you ever wonder how this all, like, happened? Uh, Brotherhood 2.0 was how Blog Brothers started. Brotherhood 2.0 was a project started by two brothers, John and Hank Green. It was John and Hank communicating with each other through vlogs for a whole year and that's how they talked to each other. They made a rule that for a year they couldn't communicate through text, so they started sending each other video blogs on their YouTube channel. So a blog is anything that, you know, is written down, especially your thoughts and your opinions. A vlog is that in video form. Say Monday, John would make a video to Hank, and then Tuesday, Hank would make a reply video. It just started as a way for them to just talk to each other uh, over long distance because they live really far away from each other. And then everyone started watching it. I'd only just come across YouTube at that point in time. And to see a guy sit there and eat toilet paper and talk about opinions and politics. Good morning, John. It's Wednesday. No, yes, yes, Wednesday. Good morning, Hank. It's Thursday, January 24th. Complicated. It was weird and hilarious at the same time as... Like giants from the place where we would stand Head against your shoulder Reach for your left hand We tried to talk about Things that we just didn't videos in general. It's just this big gathering of all these YouTube content creators and fans of those content creators. Fans of video blogging and YouTube channels. Uh, they have a bunch of different things for just fans and then they have industry meetings to learn how to make better video. <laughs> John and Hank Green are two of the most well-known on YouTube. I think that Hank and John started VidCon because they saw how uh, big of a community formed around their videos and through that they probably saw you know other people's online videos and channels and I think to them logically they're like well clearly these people have to know each other like you can't just all be into the same things and in your own little pockets you got to combine it into one world. You know, that is literally the quintessential what's beautiful about YouTube uh, in community building, in, in a sense. And uh, I think it's kind of unique that around video you can create people who are really passionate and, and have like minds, and then they can join forces to do awesome things. Good morning, Hank. It's Tuesday. My wife is a Yeti. My dog is a... You will find Uh, what we loved about you 
attitude was that it has always been a two-way street. Our passage for online video has always been that it's about community. It's not something you look at, it's something you participate in. We don't make stuff for our community, we make stuff with our community. And after three years of VidCon, we are only more certain that that is what makes online video beautiful and unique. Maybe if I tried a little harder just to find another way Find a brand new name, a brand new face, a brand new place to stay oh. Oh. VidCon is this awesome celebration of online Being completely and absolutely out of left field. I think at that point in YouTube, I didn't even know that there was a view button that you could actually look and see how many people viewed. I was just going on to watch two dudes talk to each other. For a while, like for the first two or three years, I was sort of in awe of what they were doing. I mean, the first six months, you know, it was just, isn't this great? I get to see my kids every day, you know, because they don't live at home and I get to see them talking to each other. So that was nice. Um, and then when it started becoming very popular because of the Harry Potter song and they hit their million views and then the community started kind of becoming a community, um, I was very impressed with that. It's kind of just got really, really, really large and they didn't really realize at that point that how big it was or how big they had got. It was meant to be just like a year thing, a year long thing and then they just kept going. Uh, that was when they first got into YouTube, and then the fan fans of that that you became nerd fighters, and that's where it all started. John Green is an author of young adult fiction, and he is, in my opinion.